you're watching a segment of the Shiftcast. If you want to catch the full episode, you can check it here on the YouTube channel or on Spotify. Let's get right into it. Okay, we're back from our serious segment talking with Cloud Fuel, and now we are going to mix things up a little bit. And I'm just going to pass it right over to Michael, take the reins, and let him know what we're doing. So you know, for the next two months, three months, we're going to be talking about only a few teams, right? But the Rocket League ecosystem is more than just the teams that make the major, more than make the world. In Michael. fact, we would not have mm. an in an RLCS or RL Esports without the hundreds of other teams that compete. And we felt that it was important to do a special sort of half episode dedicated to those teams. And we're going to call it the Cancun Awards. Now, why is it called the Cancun Awards? You ask. What does that mean? Non -American, North Americans. Well, there's a saying that once a team is eliminated in a, in a sport, whether it's you know basketball, football, uh, hockey, well, they get to take their trip to Cancun to go golfing, sit on the beach, and uh, you know rehab after a long, grueling season. About 98% of Rocket League pro teams are now in Cancun. In fact, we actually got in word, and I won't say who it is, that one of the teams that was supposed to be, that was asked to play in the qualifier for the Shift Summer League will not be competing because two of their players are literally on vacation. Mm. Thankfully, we don't forget those people. And so we're going to talk about and celebrate all the incredible stories, mm. players, and teams that made this, league, this year so special, even with all the noise surrounding it, because even though they're in Cancun, they're still also in our hearts. That's so right. Let's kick it off. That's beautiful. A really easy one. I have, actually, well said, my Michael. geography, I think, is pretty good, but I actually don't know where Cancun is. Mexico. Oh, okay. It's like, a, it's like a so Mexico it's, it's like on the beach. A very well-known holiday destination yes. in. Oh, it yeah. is. Uh, okay. It's like it's like you know. Ibiza. It's our Ibiza. Yeah, it's like That's right. It's like Ibiza. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Uh, or like, you know, other, like the South right. of France. The Ibiza Awards. I can get behind yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. Right. You go there, you party a little bit, have a little cocktail. A little bit. Sit on the beach, you know. Just a little bit. Nice. Exactly. Get, a, get some very um, in the moment tattoos. Yeah, totally. Ooh, I, I like that. The that's that's um, what Ibiza is known for as well. That's right yeah. in my alley. Very irresponsible tattoo. That's ideas. perfect. More irresponsible, the better. Looks like that's where Hootie's headed after he goes and falls exactly. into the major for a bit. <laughs> we got one arm done. Let's throw the other. We need some more over here. But yeah, so let's start it off. And we're going to talk about, I want to go around, similar to what we did with the major. We're just going to have a little round table on a bunch mm -hmm. of uh, topics. Okay. Which team that's in Cancun right now did you enjoy? Which team are you going to miss watching the most? Mm. Maybe not the best team, you think. Sure. But the team that you were you know excited to watch. So Hootie, why don't you start? Uh, Well... Ironically, the snowmen are in Cancun. Oh, no. They're going to be melting. I know I had a ton of fun with these guys. Y'all, I'm sure if you've been watching the show, you have picked up on the trend. I love watching upcoming talent blossom into the Monkey Moons, the K-Dops, the, the Gary G's, the Justins. It's so much fun to see these new guys um, march their way onto the scene. And, I mean, Scribbles, you know, if we hadn't had a rule change, he still wouldn't be competing. So, to see him get that chance uh, prior to turning 15 was super fun. I think those guys, they showed their potential. They showed, um, you know, glimpses of what they could become as individuals or as a full squad, uh, especially in the latter half of the season, you know, that event where they uh, beat Gen G in the Swiss stage and then played them competitively in that top eight uh, area as well. It was a ton of fun to watch the snowmen this season. I've got a team. Mm. That has actually done something that we've been talking about all season, and that mm -hmm. is play spoiler. Yeah. Because so often we're kind of looking at teams. Can they play spoiler? Can they knock out a team that may be above their pay grade? And Sir actually did it. So if we're talking about a team that you enjoyed watching, maybe not for certain fans but for the entertainment of the esports, then Su should be up there. Because they're the team to actually play spoiler where nobody else could. Yeah, I mean, broke broke all broke the championship Sunday streak, made Carmen Corp miss the regional. They were the boogeyman. They were the I boogeyman of those open you guys. This hat is annoying. I just want to <laughs> want you to admire it's my a duck. duck hat. Yeah, see? And then and that's the yeah, end I'll of take that. It off. Um, all right. so so for me, I actually changed it last minute because I originally had Shopify Rebellion. As you guys know, oh. I was riding with the Rebels all season. Yeah. 
But on my drive home today from my from my nine to five job that you know I love so much, mm-hmm. um, I I had to change the heart because I didn't. I you know there were large swaths this season where I didn't enjoy watching Shopify play because I knew they could do better, sure. and it made me sad to see them not perform to expectation. So I changed it because there was one team that just put a smile on my face every single time I watched them, and that was Team Solo Mid, TSM. These these three players, man, we didn't like they they had some some great results in the offseason. People thought they'd be a main event team, but they made some runs and they beat some teams. And the way they did it, they just seemed like they were having a blast with each other. They were having a blast on the field. They were just happy to play the game. And in a in a year that's been defined by a sort of cautious skepticism around the future of the esport it felt like the tsm players had just discovered what the rlcs was and they were in like their honeymoon phase of the esport um i i i think wavy is uh the, mm. the, uh, uh what's a bubbling star i guess is the word i'm thinking uh, a burgeoning burgeoning star that's the word i'm looking for i thought creams really came into his own i think hockey was a solid piece that really allowed him to play that very team-based style and whether they compete together or they split up i will be following all these players and I will be really, in, I'll be invested in their success going forward because they just made me enjoy watching it. I mean, I think you know what they have? They that? have joyous whimsy. That's they what they do have. have <laughs> some joyous whimsy. They had power. The power of friendship was on their side mm. right up until they missed that last regional. I mean, I Wavy is just there. a great kid. He shared yeah. his yeah. Spanish presentation on it's Twitter, so and it's just amazing. Well, to me. Um, TSM, what they personified was sort of the idea that you don't have to be a big name or have crazy wild mechanics. You can just care about playing with your team and, and get uh, you know really good results doing so. I think about that series against M80, which really felt like a complete clashing of styles. You had this team that had heavy expectations, had been put together by the org with this idea of we're going to put you all together because you have this massive amount of talent and we're going to figure it out, right? They weren't like, it wasn't like they were like, friends before or like really good friends before they weren't teaming before it was like we're gonna throw it together and it was very serious we have to do well because we put together to do well and they struggled that all season especially in those quarterfinal matches but then you got tsm three players who love being around each other who came together because they enjoy each other's company and then what happens they beat m80 right it's that literal like joyous whimsy seemed to come out on top in those final moments when one team was frazzled, the other team was laughing and, and smiling and mewing on camera. And to me, that's why TSM was just the most the most fun I had watching uh, a non-Worlds team all season. But yeah, now moving on, let's talk about teams you thought didn't think they'd be booking a flight this early this season. Mm. A lot of teams that came in with heavy expectation. We talked about M80. Which team were you most surprised to see on the beach with a virgin strawberry daiquiri? currently uh well let's go let's let uh yens go first and then we can okay 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 tag team it. um i went with luminosity gaming for me they were the third best team in na in the first split they were in points i believe but also mm-hmm. like they literally were they were that third best team you could you could say that space station uh was shooting for that third position as well but i was expecting them to at least keep a third to fourth spot going into the second split as well and and to see them not in that conversation to see them not you know making uh making it to worlds that that's something i i did not see coming i i have always ranked them higher than OG, and they just fell short, in my opinion. There, Cody, what about you? Um, are you you're not changing anything, are you? No, no, okay. that's, that was my only change. Okay, well, then you and I have the same, and it's ninjas in pajamas. Yeah, it's um, a very good choice. Yeah, well, I mean, I think the big thing for me was once they got that regional win. You know, I just totally. didn't see I didn't see how things could crumble. You know, I think um the big thing that I was not anticipating was Furia not rebounding in this third regional, right? Mm-hmm. Um I just saw how dominant Furia had been all season and then Ninja's finally able to take them down and a huge victory over complexity as well on their way. Uh, and I think one more team actually in the semifinal, I can't remember who it was. 
Uh, but yeah, after after that performance, I just thought secret maybe. It may have been secret. I think it was. Yeah. Um, but yeah, after that performance, I thought you know one of two things is going to happen. Either they're going to play well enough that they'll be fine, or Fury is going to win the event and it's not going to matter, and they'll have enough points. So yeah. I just you know I didn't I didn't even consider uh, the possibility of of them at, at the very least not being at the major. Totally. I think uh, with the talent they had, especially with the hype coming in around Swift, uh, and Astromic yeah. always kind of finds a way to like make a couple lands every year, it seems. I was expecting them to make it, especially like you said, after they won that regional, it felt like mm -hmm. a turning point for them. They couldn't figure it out. I would have loved to see them. I love, like, I'm the same with Hootie. I love seeing like new, new faces pop up and, and make a name for themselves at these international events. But you know what? Fair played the team secret. I thought they, they really yeah. showed that they were the second best team in Sam, especially in the back half of the second split. And, uh, you know, now, you know, Ninja Pajamas, they get to go on vacation. So mm -hmm. everyone wins, really. Well, <laughs> uh, I don't know if they feel yeah. the same way. We may not we may not ask them about that. And not just the teams, but, <laughs> you know, which young players that were missing out on every LAN mm. have impressed you the most? Well, I know my answer. Mm -hmm. And it's right in line with what you just were saying about Ninja and Pajamas there is Swift from that team, which I believe has slotted in so well into that roster. And you could argue for him being the best player on the squad. So I think it's really a sign of greatness from such a young player that he instantly knew how to play with his team and he was not the question mark for his team at any yeah. particular event. Yeah. Right. And that's what you want to see out of this young talent. And that's why he impressed me so much, even though he missed out on every land. Yeah. I, I'd like to see, I think Swift is, is, po is kind of positive himself to have a really strong 2025. Like, I think he's got all his experience and his first thing he's, he's, he's reached the summit in his rookie year winning a regional. And I would personally, I'm rooting for him and Diaz to link up. I know there's been a lot of competition between the two, but I'd love to see the two young stars with Sam link up together and, and, and make some noise in that region. For me, I'm actually going to reverse Jens and talk about a, a selection of his from earlier on in the Cancun Awards. I'm going to go with Tekos because Tekos won against Vatira a million times. And, you know, some people have alleged certain hater allegations against me, which I neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> I'm pleading the fifth on that one. But, I mean, listen, as a young player, the scariest thing is established players, right? We saw it for years in our conversation with Cloudfuel. We talk about how a lot of those top players would be able to sit in the highest level of, of, of league play because the other players would kind of poop their pants playing against them. So to be so fearless and constantly go up against these legends of the modern era and come out on top is so impressive. And uh, similar to Swift, I think he's positioned himself in a really good spot for next year. And I'm excited to see what he does with, his, with Sa or whatever other team he joins going forward. And, and my choice uh, for young player that impressed me is Wavy. We've talked about TSM and We're just how, much fun, uh, how much fun those guys are to watch. Wavy is just a, you know, he, he is a an outgoing personality. Michael mentioned it earlier. He's on the camera. So, you know, viewing, whatever. <laughs> this is all, I'm, I'm, I'm aging out of this, so I don't know what all these things mean anymore. <laughs> but, uh, you know, just, just seeing somebody have fun and, I mean, it's his rookie season. You know, this is his first time playing in RLCS and being so comfortable and and I had the the opportunity to um, interview the TSM team. Go watch it on my YouTube channel. Where can we see that? Go watch it on my YouTube channel. Please subscribe. H O O D Y H O O O on YouTube. Thank you. Um, they talked about he was actually their last, like on their list of people to try out. He was their last um, like candidate, and they said like immediately they clicked because he was so hungry to learn. He was so humble and just wanted he just really wanted to be the best player that he could be and find the most success that he could have and, and threw out all ego, threw out all pride. And I think that's apparent in all the $20 1v1 tournaments he plays. You know, he does yeah. not skip any opportunity to, A, win some money, but no matter the amount. But B, hone his skills, hone his skills, hone his craft. So a ton of respect for Wavy and, and those players that grind like that. Um, I do want to also give a shout to his teammate, Creams. I thought Creams, he's not as young, and he's obviously been around for a while in the sub role, but he was freaking phenomenal. I thought he was so, so good all season. Those couple of really good events that TSM had, I think, was a lot to do with Creams playing 
uh, some of his best ball. Sure. So big shout to Creams as well. Yeah. Honorable mention uh, there. But I like um, to hear that he's just playing in every once tournament like that. But I know. you know what they say, <laughs> 20 bucks is 20 bucks. That's right. Yeah. I think it'll be exciting to see what happens with Wavy Creams going forward, mm -hmm. whether they stay or split, because I think specifically with Wavy, I think there's a lot of other young players who could use someone like him around where they kind of struggle with mental stuff. He seems to have gotten sure. that down. Well, I'm yeah. sure he has his issues with the yeah, efficiency yeah. and whatever, but he's a lot farther along, it seems like, than a lot of other players. Mm -hmm. um, kind of reminds me of when Arsenal first came in. I know he's had some issues, you know, reported issues with mental stuff, especially later in his career, but early on, he was just known as that kid who was just bring up, bringing uh, energy, such a positive, having some fun. Yeah, exactly. And, yep. and it obviously has, you know, for a long time, kept him at the top of the region. Yep. So. It's worked out Shout out to him. all three. Yeah. Yep. Um, so this next one is actually a unanimous yeah, yeah from what the sigma um <laughs> so we're gonna talk i guess we'll just talk about it uh the the team if we had a, like an lcq for the last world spot the last which chance team do we think would win and get to the world championship who wants to say it one three two oh. one luna, luna galaxy, galaxy. Oh, we're so good at that <laughs> we think so that that's amazing time. That I think it's pretty <laughs> obvious. They they look like a top team in Europe. Yeah, if absolutely. You're a top team in Europe, you're probably a top team in the world. Um, yeah. Just a question though: if they were playing at this major, what would your expectation be for the, their finish? Can I, can I give like a, a range? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so round five of Swiss to top four. Yeah. I there. was going to say top eight. I think they're a top yeah. eight team. I think yeah. they run into a. I don't know. A if they would Falcons go. G two right there. Yeah, exactly. I would. I would give them round five to be honest, but I'm yeah, a that's... pessimist, I guess. Yeah, well, it, it's yes. it's tough though because they just hit their stride, right? And and yeah. so you don't want to yeah. overvalue it, but at the same time, yeah. a lot of these lands they they, it, you know, it favors those teams that are hot right now. Right. So. Yeah, that it's is. Tough. I that think is they they remind me a lot of in terms of their positioning worldwide. I think they're they're firmly in that SSG category, where sure. it's like it would be a huge success to get top four, but I think they'd be a little a little disappointed if they didn't make it to the top. I mean, it would I'm, be completely on brand for Tox to miss out on the playoffs <laughs> just by like one goal. It sure yeah. would, man. OT game five Eesh. against power or something. I mean, it's um, already inc incredible that just after uh, Finn wrote an entire article for Shift yeah. about Tux always just missing out mm -hmm. on LAN. There he, he is he again. Misses out by one spot. Missing out just, on LAN by one so spot. He's so on brand. Talk about building your brand. Consistency, yeah. man. Yeah. Absolutely. Got it. Um, so another question. Which team hmm. in Cancun currently you know, it again, maybe maybe doing some salsa salsa classes. I don't know. Which team do you think should run it back for 2025? Oh, the team that's absolutely getting the name of their ex tattooed on their legs <laughs> right this moment. <laughs> that is jobless. That's jobless a segment. Segue in. <laughs> jobless are a team that are partying in Ibiza right now, but they should be back on the grind right at the start of next season because i think even without any star potential you could say uh they are strong enough to get picked up by an org and to do really well you know I think they, they have really underrated still. year yeah like, they did as 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 much as they they missed a regional and that's what's kind of defined it but like two top eights two top fours most teams are yeah. walking away from that pretty happy well like three top eights sorry three top eights two top fours if that other regional they don't miss it they go top four again like right we're talking about them as like really yep. uh, having and a strong it, it year would have been, loaded world. yeah it would have been different if they hit a bit of a slump right next uh, right at the end of the season but they didn't yeah. yeah um so for me i told you i swapped my first one and then i said i wasn't going to swap anymore but i lied i'm going to swap again I'm actually swapping it right in, and I want to go with Shopify Rebellion. So I, I put TSM where I was going to put Shopify Rebellion. I put oh, Shopify Rebellion. run it back, Rebellion. Um, in a similar vein to what Hootie talked about, I think they finished the season so yeah. strong. Yeah. Um, I think they they played a very risky style. They were the top offense in North America, and they were the worst defense in North America among qualified North American teams uh, in the main event, which means that they like to you know full glass cannon it. And uh, I think a lot of that came down to, and I, I mentioned this in our last kind of talk about Shopify, but that Parth said they weren't necessarily putting in the work that they should have. Mm. Um, and when you're playing a really balls to the wall style, that could kill yeah. you if you're not on your game, right? Yep. But I think towards the end of the year, I've said it multiple times, I think two piece looked as good as any player in North America. I think oh, yeah. he was up there with Beast Mode, LJ Daniel, 
uh, for the best player in the region. I think Parth, who has historically been quite inconsistent, started stringing together consistent performances, and you really saw it. I was also going to point out that Two Piece was actually the best performing player in North America statistically this split, thanks to the shift stats. Um, and Justin was where, third. Where can you find those stats? You can find them on shiftarly.gg and also on our Twitter account, which is, you know, we have about okay. 70,000 followers. You should follow it too. It's what all the cool kids are doing. Um, Justin was actually third as well. So they were absolutely frying teams yeah. scoring wise. Uh, and I think, listen, if you told me that there was a team that went 3 0 in North America and finished top two, I tell you that's a contender. Um, and, you know, things can happen over the offseason. But to me, I look at that team as a team that was finally starting to piece together their identity. And unfortunately, we just have a shorter season this year. It, I think it would have been fantastic. In the it's first. very similar to what you guys just said about Jobless. The one missed a exactly. regional, and it really, yeah. really put a damper on the full season. Well, they finished, I think, seven points out of a world spot, and yeah. they finished top 16 one regional and missed another one. If they get yep. two it's, top eights, we may be talking about them as a look, team that OG has look, to pass. That, exactly, because that top 16 is not good. Mm -hmm. But you can flub like that. You just yeah. can't. Miss a regional. You cannot miss yeah, a regional. Totally. We're seeing Carmi Court face. Almost like there should be a little bit more safety and consistency <laughs> in our LCS format. You said it, not me. You said it. Not <laughs> hey, me. this is a fun. We're going to get to the. We, oh, we already right. had our we're, we're, segment. we're on holidays. Sorry. That's right. Yeah, we're on, we're vacation, on holiday, dude. dude. Get, get a drink in your hand. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, but yeah, I think Justin still has a lot in the tank. Yep. Um, <laughs> I really think that there's a, there's a lot of Alpha 54 to him where he was sure. playing with players that were past their prime. And it kind of hit his results, and he became easier. a little underrated. Um, and then now that he's playing with maybe two younger stars uh, and players that are developing, I think I think he's still got a lot in the tank. And I just really believe in two piece, man. I just want to see two yeah, piece get to that too. land and perform. Well, well mine. If we're talking. Yeah, go for it. My uh, my selection for the team that I would like to see running back. No surprise, Snowman. And let, let me give you the reasoning because obviously I, I, I've been a fan of the younger, upcoming, the budding talent. But I think um, that's not really a part of why I said it here. Why I said it here is because I think that is one of the teams that has room to grow from what I've seen. I think a lot of the other rosters, M80, they're all very talented, but it just feels like, unfortunately, whether it's mental or not, like they've hit their ceiling. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think TSM, fantastic players. I mean, I've, we've already shot them out. I, I love these guys, but I don't, I don't see them excelling. I can see snowmen with that same roster that we've seen now mm -hmm. have a, a hardworking off season and be a top 14 next season. I could see that. I could see them being at every single major. I think they have more to give um, or more to learn, I guess, and, and experience to gather and even more confidence to, to build as they roll into next season. And you look at the ability mechanically. I mean, they're all three more than capable. Damn. So, um, you know, my, my perspective there with that team is they've got plenty of room to grow their first season under their belt. And I think uh, throughout, like I said, a hardworking offseason, I, I could definitely see them solidifying themselves as a third, a fourth team in North America. Well, let's talk about our Cancun or Ibiza MVP. Okay. Wait, wait, and, wait, wait, before we go, I want to do a yeah. quick shout out. I would like to see the boys down in the Middle East, Team Rock. Yeah, you guys need to stay yeah. together too because yep. I think you yep. can echo exactly what, exactly. what you said. I almost said that. Yes, Team Rock. So yeah, 100%. Just, yeah, same thing for them. It's basically the same team, just a different region. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, if we're talking about our MVPs mm -hmm. on the summer break, then I am struggling to piece together why I'm the Did only you? one picking. My boy, two piece over here. <laughs> when you were just I'm hyping up here. the entire team <laughs> and he's, telling me he's ascending, there's someone else who's at the top right now. Telling me player who can how he's play. the best statistical player. What's this all about? Well, For me, the MVP is two piece because I believe that even though he had very decent teammates this season, the points didn't really reflect how good two piece is. Yeah. I think. Him individually as a player uh, is ranked below where yeah. his skill can take him. So for me, out of the players, not making worlds is my MVP. Yeah, I think there's a lot of oxygen LJ to him where it's like he's going to move yeah. to, if he moves to a team with other top teammates, you're going to be like, wait, is he the best player in the region? Right, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. yeah. 
but I, I'm going to go with the player who I feel like already showed that he's a top player and unfortunately was born in the wrong country, so he doesn't get to team with the top players. Uh, Hootie, I believe this is your selection as well, and that is Mr. LTK Atomic from Luna Galaxy. This guy has had an absolute tragedy of a career. Um, you know, he, Bro, he won a regional when they're in, during COVID, so he wasn't able to go to the land then. Finally gets back to that top area, gets the team with a former major MVP in Mark Baez as well as Dorito, goes to the land, beats FaZe, and then throws two series. That was a really tough one to watch. Mm. Uh, and he's really struggled to get back there, but I think all season there's never been a doubt about Atomic. I mean, he is an absolute stud on the stat sheet, and if you watch him, <laughs> Like, it's hard to believe that this guy's not consistently going deep at lands. Yeah. I think he's one of the best players in the, in the world. And I think if he decides, and I don't know anything, so don't get mad at me, but if he decides to move regions, it would be completely justified because he's kind of getting hard capped by French people right now. And if he move, decides to move to another region and farm that region, I will not be surprised. Wait, I, was, I was trying to figure out a way that we could work in Atomic and make fun of Yens, but I couldn't. I couldn't come up with anything. I like it. Unfortunately, two piece is just the I, that our social oh, media manager. I was just, well. okay. This is what I had him. All I was stuck with was like your joke was an atomic stinker. <laughs> yeah, right, that was pretty yeah. good. Yeah, you, you've no, got nuclear um, on that one. <laughs> our our social media manager at Shift Will has this one meme he loves to use where it's just a picture of two piece and it goes and it just says struggling two piece together. How you've just lost a shop if I remember. Great stuff. It is um, a very good meme. That was good. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think that wraps. Does that wrap the Cancun Awards? Absolutely. But that was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, listen, to, literally, genuinely, to every team, your season, your RLCS season is over. You can obviously still compete in other tournaments, such as the Shift Summer League, which we'll get Ooh. to in a moment. But thank you so much mm -hmm. for working as hard as you do for grinding scrims and VOD replays and playing those god awful open qualifiers where you have to play seventeen hundreds for no reason. Uh, and, and making the RLCS season what it is, because without the players that are currently laid up on a beach chair, listen to the ocean breeze, we wouldn't have stories like Su, we wouldn't have stories like the Snowmen, we wouldn't have stories like Team Rock, even stories like Erased, you know, going on these miracle runs in the final ones. And uh, you make the RLCS what it is. So never forget that and keep on your grind because your time's coming. Wow, we flew through that, just like how we should be flying to Ibiza right now. Dude, I'm in the mood, man. <laughs> <laughs> If and if you do it, it if you do it proper okay. European style, you go on a very relaxing holiday to sit all day by the pool at the hotel, but you get up at five or six a.m. to put your towel on those chairs so you can <laughs> so you claim can them claim for it. when you <laughs> go when you wake back up at like nine or ten. That feels like Bali to me. It's it's a German kind of stereotype, but it it applies to most of Europe. That was a segment of the Shiftcast. If you want to catch the full episode, you can check it here on the YouTube channel or on Spotify. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you next time.